What is up, people on the internet? It is I, Michael Shockman, here with an, the next episode of Shadowrun Returns. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, last time we left off, um, we had gotten done investigating the, uh, um, I believe we had gotten done investigating the, um, uh, the warehouse with, uh, Shannon, um, Moonstar, whatever her name is, um, a little bit about when I'm, at the time of my recording this particular episode and the episodes going forward from this point, um, it's been quite a bit since I actually did it, which if you watched the, at the beginning of the, the, the first episode of this series, um, I had a little thing saying that I'm recording this, this episode directly after I recorded that, so it's been a little bit. Um, so bear with me while I, uh, kind of get back into the saddle, as it were. Um, but without any further ado, uh, um, before we get started, uh, if you wouldn't mind, please, um, smashing that like button. It helps out my channel immensely with the algorithm. Um, also, if you haven't already, please be sure to, um, smash that subscribe button and, uh, comment down below with what your favorite, uh role-playing game system is, whether it's Cyberpunk, D&D, Pathfinder, or Shadowrun. Um, but with that being said, guys, without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to load the game, and we are on the, um, let's see here, um, let's see, um, okay, the Dead Man Switch, Spirit Talk, um, he hid inside the dark area. Okay. And we are going to load the game. Alright. So how are you guys doing at home, huh? You guys having a great day? A great evening? Um, hope you are. Hope you're checking out my channel just to have a good time, because I try to provide as much joy and entertainment as, as I can for the people. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. What? Search the spot where the victim was found. Where the victim's body was found. Blood. This is what the spirits wanted us to find. The piece of my brother's killer. It's not much, but it's enough. She scowls at it, looking every bit like she intends to reach through the small sample and dismember its own dismember its owner from afar. And perhaps she can. Can you track him with that? I can, given enough time. But I'm still feeling quite drained. I'll need to rest before I can try to try anything so involved. When I'm able, commune with Bear, consult the spirits, and do what I what must be done. But in the meantime, you might want to take uh, take some portion of the sample to pursue a more conventional avenue of attack. I have some friends who might be able to help. Good. Let me know if you learn anything about this elf or troll pair. And should you find them. I want to be there when they are brought low. I want to see the light in their eyes for my brother. Um. Yeah, we'll be detached. As long as your need for vengeance doesn't endanger the op. Alright. Okay. 
go. Yes. After hours, when you return to the Seamstress Union in the early hours of the morning, it seems a completely different place. Bereft of the normal crowd that haunts it, the bar feels desolate, almost abandoned. It's eerie, like the back out, like the back hallways of hotels and shopping malls. Uh, but you finally have a break in your case, a sample of the Ripper's blood. You just need to find someone to help you analyze it. Talk to Miss Kabuda. Oh, hey, oh, would you like some? She stops. Forgive me, oh, man. oh my, but you look like hell. Thanks. Just the welcome I was looking for. <laughs> she looks you over, noting the signs of your nocturnal activities. She nods. Any run you can walk away from is a good run. So I've been told. I can tell you have been busy, and I can see the look on your face that, uh, from the look on your face that there is something you need. Is it about the Ripper? Yep, I found some DNA evidence and need help analyzing it. That is excellent! I will unlock the piano so you may go downstairs. I am certain someone in the safe house will be able to help you. If they are awake, that is. It is likely that you will, be, you will visit the Matrix before the day is done. Thanks. Gum gambate kudas kudasai, good luck. Yes. I wasn't sure if it was going to um, have us be able to still continue. You've been doing the digital world. You've been doing a lot of legwork on this job, but it's not. It's going to require a trip to cyberspace and back to ID the Ripper. The Matrix, the cybernetic analog of the of um, analog of inside the grid. Um, that's a typo. <laughs> um, the worldwide computer network. Um, a digital world, information brought to life. Inside cyberspace, your avatar does all the work while your meat body is left behind. All around your avatar are all around your avatar are pathways to other nodes filled with data. IC counter intrusion or ICE uh, counter intrusion programs and other jacked and runners. Cyberspace has as many dangers as the meat world and more. Locked doors, security and countermeasures. And black ice uh, that can fry a uh, Decker's brain. Every movement you make in the Matrix can be tracked. If you aren't careful, get dump shocked out of your brain and your brain gets fuzzy for a bit. Get hit by an enemy Decker and you can die. David Fry the Second. Morning. You look like you've been up all night. You look like you've seen some action too. Suppose I could use a shower. <laughs> you here to buy equipment? Negative. Need a DNA analysis. Fry can help you out. Hmm. Doc Castle's equipment isn't really isn't really set up for that. He considers for a minute. However, I could employ a semiconductor chip. It could decode DNA uh, using a voltage change instead of light. That could emulate the, the use of highly expensive equipment that would be required. He brightens. I just need a journal. I just need a journal about it uh, so the information is still fresh. Frankly, it should be easy. What do you, what do you want to know about it? The owner's identity. Ah, that's beyond me. All I can get you is the gene code sequence. But that's where I come in. David, 
If you can get me that code sequence, I'm pretty sure we can track its owner uh, down via a matrix run. Will do. Let me have the DNA you want to you want to test. Give the give Fred the sample. D shock. When David gives me the sequence, I'll jack in and help you trace the blood sample back to its source. If this works, I'll bring back more than just a sample. Uh, whose blood is it? Could be the Emerald City Ripper. No Drek? He turns to Johnny, excited. <laughs> Wake up, Johnny boy. You've got work to do. And D Shock, you, if you need any gear, I'll be right here. I got, I just got a second wind. Meet you at my rig, D Shock. Nice. Nice. Actually, that's a good question. How much cash do we have? Huh, we're not doing too bad. We have 20 karma points. Holy crap. Jesus. Seven. Um... That's right. Okay. Ah, oh, Johnny Clean. Thanks to the semiconductor-based gene sequencing system that David employed, we should have the information we need to track the Ripper in the Matrix. I'm really impressed with his results, by the way, considering it was his first attempt. He was utilizing, utilizing an unproven technique He'd read about it in a science journal, and he was working from memory on a, on minimal sleep. <laughs> so that sounds great. That's great, Professor. What's the plan? We hit the Lone Star DNA database to see if our donor uh, um, has prior criminal has a prior criminal record. They have extensive uh, DNA archives. Then we go hunting on what we find. Let's hit the decks and jack into the matrix. I can get into their private grid easily, but I've got to warn you, once we're in, it could get a little rough. How much decking experience have you had? None. I have a trode net here. It's, it's a headband you wear that lets you piggyback um, me in the matrix. You'll see what and hear whatever I do. Alright, perfect, confirm, here we go, we're in, Suppression. That was weird. Oh man, did we run into...
Hold on, guys. One second. Um, I think we just ran into a bug. Sorry about this, guys. <laughs> this is not not okay. Oh man. Um, uh, okay, here we go. There we go. That's better. Data stores ahead. Come on. Nice. Come on. Got him. DNA match located, 100% match, arrest records, database. Subject, Silas Forsberg, status, deceased, profession, chop chop, surgical assistant, priors, breaking and entering, two counts, public indecency, one count, brought in for questioning on accusations of unlicensed plastic surgery, no charges were filed. Alright, 100% match to a dead man? Let's keep looking. more hits on the name for her. I've got two more hits on the name for Silas Forsberg autopsy records. Subject, Silas Forsberg notes, subject was found overdosed on, on half a dozen different sedatives. Several anti-anxiety medications were also found in his system. Face was mutilated, possibly self-inflicted. Identity could not be confirmed immediately due to the, to the dismemberment or the disfigurement. I had to check dental records to confirm. No next of kin. Large puncture wounds were found in several places on the body. Possibly large bore surgical needles. Body had been de decomposing for several weeks before the landlord noticed the smell and called the police when no one answered the door. Alright, this just keeps getting weirder.
got it. Alright. This is very, very interesting. Apparently, um, in cyberspace, you can use skills whenever you, whenever you want. You don't just, you can't, you're not limited to using them in combat. Uh, Newsnet. Uh, number one, return on subjects. Uh, Silas Forsberg, the body of Silas Forsberg, a chop shop surgical assistant was found in an apartment in Snohomish earlier this week. The body had been there for as long as a month when Forsberg's landlord noticed a rancid smell and contacted authorities. Lone Star representatives have issued a statement saying Forsberg's death has been ruled a suicide. Con according to reports, his body, um... His body was a mass of puncture wounds, and the cause of death was determined to be an overdose of stress uh, of anti-stress medications and sedatives. The man's employer claims he was a dedicated employee, though he suffered from bouts of depression. Forsberg's next of kin could not be located, but the attorney po appointed to his estate has located a will written weeks prior, leaving all of his belongings to a psychiatrist. The identity of the psychiatrist was has not been released due to privacy concerns. Yet another sad end to a life, uh, as as is far too common here in the sprawl. Hmm, this seems interesting. Now that might be something we can go on. Let's regroup in the meat in mid space before for a bit. Who the fuck was his psychiatrist? <laughs> so here's what we know. Our DNA evidence
Thank you. 